Hey everybody and welcome to another home automation quickie. Today we're going to be talking about sensors. Now anyone who's in the home automation scene loves sensors. They can provide us with tons and tons of data points that we can analyze and determine you know how our HVAC is working, how ecologically friendly our house is, so on and so forth. We've all got tons of experience with sensors and we all love them, especially temperature and humidity sensors like the, the DHT22 or some of the Nest uh, or Nest and Ecobee remote room temperature sensors or even the temperature sensor that's built into your smart thermostat already. We're going to go in a little bit of a different direction today in terms of sensors. It's not going to be all about collecting data points and trending and all that fun awesome stuff. Today we're going to be using our sensors to be proactive about safety. One of the most important safety devices in all of our houses are smoke detectors. Whether they're smart smoke detectors like the Nest Protect or conventional smoke detectors, they are bar none uh, some of the most important pieces of electronic equipment we have in our homes. In an ideal world, we would have a smoke detector in every room, on every floor, bathrooms, bedrooms, hallways, kitchens, etc. But unfortunately, that's not the reality. Today, we're going to look at a way to augment our smoke detector and uh, fire early warning system using the sensors we already have in our house. Usually, these sensors occupy spaces in our homes where smoke detectors may or may not be present. Uh, they're, they're often low to the ground near the uh, electrical outlets they're plugged into, or they're mounted on a wall in a hallway where your thermostat might be. And they provide us with a really good opportunity to gain additional coverage in, uh, in fire detection. And it's as simple as setting a heat threshold and connecting it to a notification node. So I'm gonna step through this now. It might be a little basic for some of you, um, but I think it's, it's very worthwhile for those of us who haven't uh, thought of using them in these ways, or just kind of need a reminder that uh, some of the smart home devices that we've installed can be used not only to do really cool stuff like data modeling and analytics and turning lights on and off, but to actually improve the safety infrastructure in our homes as well. So let's get started. So you can see what I've laid out on my node red flow already are uh, three of the temperature sensors that are in my home that I'd like to use for this exercise. And these are all using uh, home assistant nodes that are current state nodes. So these have to be triggered by an inject node, which I'll grab from up here. And we will set this inject node to repeat at a set interval of every one minute. And we'll say done to that. We'll connect this inject node up to these current state nodes. And let's quickly pipe these into a debug node so we can have a look at the output that we get. So I'm going to look at this uh, nursery temperature sensor. I'll deploy it. I'll clear the debug. And I'm going to make sure my debug node is set to the complete message object. Deploy it again. And I'll run the inject. And there we can see an example message. Now in this message, we've got a topic which matches the uh, sensor ID or the end of day ID from uh, Home Assistant. And we've got a payload which gives us a temperature. So easy enough. What we're going to do now is we're going to take a a switch node place it here and for my use case I'm gonna say I want to be alerted every time the temperature exceeds 35 degrees so greater than 35 and we can even add a second one um, this could be also used for to detect freezing temperatures if you have a basement that gets cold in the winter time and you don't want your pipes to burst maybe we could say also detect if the basement is colder than 5 degrees we'll say done to that and we don't need to do any uh, message finessing because the, the temperature is already going to be displayed in the payload. Now I'm going to be using um, a Android push message to deliver the message to me. And I've got this function set up so that we get some uh, a friendly message instead of just you know a temperature or something like that with, the, with no real information about where it's coming from. So I set up this function uh, to make the, to set the Bar variable called source to the message dot topic, which is going to be that our entity ID, and the variable temp uh, to equal the message dot payload of the previous message, which is going to be the actual temperature, and then I reform the payload into uh, an object that can uh, configure the Home Assistant node to push me an Android message. Now this can be used for any kind of Home Assistant notification node, or you can even use push bullet uh, as we have in the past to push it straight to your phone. So I'm gonna leave this, this part of it kind of open-ended. You guys can push the message and the notification however you want. Uh, another option would be to maybe uh, make your, uh, any some of your media players play 
a certain warning sound or a certain tone full blast to wake people up if, if uh, you know, you're worried about this thing detecting a, a fire while you're home. And that might be a good option too. So, so I'll connect this switch node straight up to the messaging uh, nodes. Sorry, one thing we forgot to do is actually set these fields to numbers. Uh, it's important when you're doing number comparison that the fields are actually set to be numbers. Okay, so now we're ready to test. Uh, I've got my phone open here. I'll, I'll shrink this uh, window a little bit so we can see what's going on. And I'll push the inject node. So in this case, we have triggered the flow and because none of my sensors are reading over 35 degrees, we have gotten no messages on the Android platform, uh, which is expected. This is what hopefully is going to be going on most of the time uh, on this uh, routine. It should, should be doing nothing. But just for the sake of this uh, example, I will set this to anything over 10 will trigger a notification. I'll deploy that. And then we'll push this. So I'll push the inject node. And right away on the phone, we can see that we get messages from all three sensors, giving us the sensor name and the temperature reading that they're getting. So notification seems to be working. Um, again, uh, this is only one example. Like I said, you could hook up a media player to play really loud tones to wake people up or, or flashlights or whatever it is you feel would alert you to the situation. Now, this is of course no replacement for real smoke detectors. This is more just a video to get you thinking about how your existing smart home infrastructure can be used to not only do really cool stuff like data uh, collection or turning lights on and off, but it can be used in a way to keep you and your family uh, more safe. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. If not, give her a thumbs down and uh, we'll see you later.